My guest for the fifth episode is Ying Ai. She's a senior methodologist at the Canada Revenue Agency. Ni hao, ni shen mei yang. Ni hao. Oh, hi, <laughs> um, I've asked uh, Ying to come and speak to us because she also has a background in mathematics and statistics, an academic background, and uh, she's transitioned into a workplace um, use of mathematics and statistics. And I thought it'd be an interesting uh, conversation to have to see how academic mathematics, statistics, quantitative work differs from well, real work applications in mathematics and statistics. Can you tell us a little bit about your academic background? Sure. Yeah. Yes, I really appreciate that I have learned uh, mathematics mm. and statistics as a universal language. So all the years of my study and research experience in this field has really helped me to build a solid foundation for me to explore further in this field and other domains. I got my bachelor and my first master in mathematics in China. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I became a lecturer in my home university. And then I um, went to Pretoria, South Africa yeah. to continue my PhD study based on the invitation of the dean yeah. um, who provided me some South African national bursary. Okay. And while, while doing the uh, research in mathematical analysis and uh, mathematical physics, I taught some math courses and do some research as well. And after I finished my finished my PhD, I did one year's postdoc research uh, in the same university uh, of Pretoria. And uh, in December two thousand six, uh, we, my husband and I decided to choose Ottawa as our living city in Canada. And in September 2007, I registered for my master degree course uh, in statistics uh, uh, at Carleton University. I treated this as some complementary uh, course mm -hmm. to my previous education, which uh, focused mostly on probability, measure theory, etc. And uh, my and my academic study or research uh, in South Africa or in China mainly focus on mathematical analysis, mm -hmm. theoretical like uh, differential equations, sublet space, this kind of stuff. But in North America, statistics is uh, more popular. Yeah. But that's also that's also my background. So I understand that in the yeah. workplace, there isn't mm -hmm. really high demand for the radon Nikodim theorem or you know any of these Lebesgue integration yeah. uh, things. So at some point, presumably, like statistics or learning statistics has presumably helped you uh, transition into the mathematical workplace as well. But I suspect if you're like me, having the high uh, mathematical background made it so that it was actually fairly straightforward to learn statistics and data analysis because you have a lot of the, you said you called it a universal language, but the tools to be able to make sense of what's happening. And then your previous career as a lecturer also sort of helps you try to focus on understanding the important things to, to capture. So you're at the CRA now. Uh, was this the first, is this your first uh, non-academic employment? Or did you do something uh, else no. before? Actually, I just joined the CRA last July. Okay. So I had been working with immigration uh, for 10 years oh. as well. Okay. So my first job is a consultant job okay. with uh, the Department of Immigration and Citizenship. Uh, do you feel that your, your current work projects actually require the use of your academic training? Now, we've just discussed the fact that, well, you know, in, in grand terms, you can say, well, I've been prepared because I speak the language, I understand the context. But in terms of actual academic training, even if you look at your statistical academic training, does, does your current work um, require you to use that? Or is it more along the lines of, now I know how to learn and I can learn on my own? What, how, does that, how does that work for you? Honestly, 
、uh, the knowledge I learned from school just、um, built me very good foundation for understanding, and it established me like a, of the good habit of a thinking、um, uh, logically and uh, using uh, analytical tools to analyze and integrate the information. However, the work. I have been doing needs more exploration of for other domains like、uh, economics or, for example, like、uh, the other topics like、uh, a project for the call center.、Uh, it requires me to do research、uh, to explore a very different model, like the Erlang's model,、mm-hmm. uh, which is、uh, which I didn't learn from school.、Sure. So、uh, the the knowledge、um, may、uh, sometimes maybe not straightforward to be applied into the workplace.、Uh, however, your understanding of the topics and、uh, the tools you already have、uh, and、uh, your analytical skills are there to or help you to do research、mm. and、uh, to quickly. Integrate、uh, available information and、uh, s- establish the logical relationship between the pieces of information. Because I heard you mention like something about the importance of like the multidisciplinary aspect of the work you do. It's not just like oh, I'm going to be doing you know I'm working on the, that statistical component. We're working on everything, and presumably,、um, this this academic training allows you to be able to pick up. The important essential features from the other fields that you didn't uh, uh, study, but、uh, as a student, I mean, but that you can fairly easily pick up and or at least be able to talk to the experts in these other fields and be able to get what they're、yeah. getting out of that. Okay, well, that, that's、uh, that's good news for、uh, for people who rely on academic training, but it's also an important lesson, I think, or an important point to highlight the fact that. We rarely use our actual academic training for what it is. It's mostly as a stepping stone towards、uh, being able to integrate and incorporate and absorb these other things. Yes.、Um, now you've you've had some professional experience, non-academic professional experience. Now you about ten to twelve years. Are there some things that you wish you had learned, either academically or non-academically, before you started working? Professionally, yeah, honestly. So in terms of academic、mm. training, I I wish I had learned、uh, much more,、mm. and also because the data science, for example, is a very like modern term. Yes,、um, it developed、uh, very quickly, still in development, but is a very good.、Um, Merge of the computer science、mm-hmm. with the statistics. I wish,、uh, like,、uh, before I entered the,、uh, into the workplace,、uh, I had、uh, n- known more、yeah. of、uh, of in this field because uh, uh, even though we we employed some like、uh, mathematical tools、uh, or statistical tools, however, the computer science wasn't. Hasn't hadn't been merged、uh, so widely、mm-hmm. uh, with the、uh, mathematics or statistics、uh, earlier. So that's one thing in terms of academic、mm-hmm. training. I wish I had before I entered into the workplace. The other thing is maybe not through academic training. For example, the effective communication skills. Yes. Ah.、Uh, And、uh, like、uh, how to work with a team,、uh, how to resolve con- a conflict, and uh, uh, what a, a leadership、yeah. requires for.、Um, so all these、uh, soft skills, I call it, are very necessary and very important. So if、uh, before or、uh, I entered into the workplace, I had learned.、Uh, Uh, something touch these areas like the car,、uh, workplace culture,、yeah. etc. It will really help me to adapt to different、uh, vibrant workplace、uh, better. It, it's it's not obvious too because like if you even if you go to a different place to work, like the different sector in which you work has its own different 
uh, workplace culture, and even within the public service, different mm -hmm. departments have their own public uh, 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 working cultures or work cultures. So there's a lot of. Uh, uh, I've also I've also experienced something of a similar nature, having been a an academic, you know, up mm -hmm. until I was about 30 years old, and then switching to the public service, and coming back to academia you sort of have to relearn what the workplace culture is over and over yeah. again and it changes uh, yeah, it's not the same you know that it was 10 years ago and it's not the same that's going to be five years from now so there's a lot of uh, learning there i know for myself because there's only so many things we can learn for academic wise look if we hadn't learned the math and we had done the computer science instead we might have found the computer science learning more difficult because we didn't have the math i mean we can't really go back and yes we could have learned so much so much more i i, I agree with that but you know we're limited in terms of the amount of time we have to learn but on the soft side of things what i wish i had learned is i wish i had learned more languages i find that in many instances we work in like not just multidisciplinary teams but multicultural teams and uh, i i mean if i if i work with a francophone I feel, I feel it's so much easier to get to where we want to go if we speak French to one another. If I work with an Anglophone, much easier to, you know, if we can speak English to one another. But now that we have teams that are multicultural, it, it would seem to me that one thing that's lacking in my soft skills is the ability to sort of speak to uh, various team members in the language that will allow us to sort of elevate the project more and more. But again, learning languages is not an easy thing. You've heard me try to mangle the uh, a very easy greeting in Mandarin at the start of this video. Um, but I would, for me, that's one of the things I wish I had, uh, I had spent more time uh, focusing on. Yes. Yeah, I totally agree that actually being multilingual yeah. is important, and uh, especially when your team is, uh, is, uh, has a lot of diversity. It's mainly like uh, knowing about your audience, yeah how to use the most appropriate and effective ways to communicate. Yeah, how, yeah. To, how to speak to the director as, as opposed yeah. to speak and to get your point across and to, to be listened that's a, a, or taken seriously. That's a, that's a challenging thing to learn, I agree. So I know for a fact that you are still uh, learning, that you do continuing learning. Um, how much of that do you do? Like how much of the new stuff do you learn? How do you approach continuing learning? Is this something that you think that we all have to do? Do you envision yourself, you know, five years from now saying, okay, now I've learned everything there was to learn and I don't need to learn anymore? Or are you envisioning basically learning until the day you retire? And even after you've retired, you might keep on learning. What's your, what's your take on that? Uh, yes, this is a very good question. Actually, I think, uh, Learning is a lifelong process. Yes. I think uh, as long as I live, I would <laughs> learn yeah. something and uh, daily or like uh, prepared uh, uh, training or like uh, etc. Actually, every year uh, uh, I will discuss with my manager or supervisor to uh, for a learning plan. For example, the course which I just uh, took with you the, on the data science is uh, uh, after a lot of exploration and you also help me to design what kind of data science training is the best yeah. for me. Besides this, for example, every year, I, in order to maintain my language profile, yes. I also learn French. Every year, I may uh, take some course from OU or like how to write effective reports or how to make an effective presentation and uh, the other skills like uh, how to manage your stress because uh, you know like uh, sometimes the workplace yeah. can be crazy and uh, often change your priorities yes. uh, you know <laughs> i find it like, very difficult to finish projects like you always have so many projects and it's everybody wants a bit of your time to do everything it's like how do you find the time to work on every yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. You, we have research plan like one year's research plan and two years research plan. Because research, um, uh, very often it's long term. Yes, it's longer term. But very often you will receive ad hoc requests, and they need very short term results. So all these things, uh, um, um, like uh, we need to learn how to manage by. 
by doing, by organizing, um, by reflecting, also by some courses. There are some courses to uh, help you to get some like a basic or enhanced ideas. And also because I use, uh, no, CRE is more operational, but my past department uh, is more policy, uh, both a policy and operational. So I, every year I also, um, because I do policy research, so I also did a lot of course uh, um, for the government body and policy development process, etc. So uh, it's basically every year, every term, I would design some courses for myself mm -hmm. to to explore or to discuss with my supervisor uh, about the possibility. Okay. So a lot of this is self-directed, though you you're not being asked to keep on learning. So you recognize the importance of. Of, yeah. Well, continuing yeah, learning, and you want to have the agency to decide what it is that you should be learning, rather than be told you will take this course and you will take this course. So that's a, I think that's another very good uh, uh, lesson to uh, to impart to a young to to a younger generation of learners that you know it doesn't end. You should keep on learning forever, yeah. but also that you you should have some agency in what you're learning. I know when you're a student. You feel you don't have a lot of choices about which courses you have to take. I mean, I remember learning analysis as a kid. We had to take, like, you know, dynamical systems and complex analysis and functional functional analysis, and there wasn't really room for other things. We, you know, we were told what to learn, but uh, that it's possible to sort of like take control over the learning process now that you're out of school and you have. Uh, well, yeah. Nobody's going to tell yeah. you what to do anymore, and you can you can you can be yeah, your own definitely. person. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because sometimes people can help you identify your like a blind spots, but very often you yourself need to identify identify your gaps. Yes. Well, so the self not but you you know yourself. Yeah, so. self knowledge seems to be a pretty. It's it, look, it's difficult. I, I mean. Uh, just not just for quantitative people for people in general we have this idea as to who we are and it might not actually match the reality of who it is that we are like I think of myself as a very uh, outgoing friendly person mm -hmm. but that is not what my teaching evaluations say and so there's often a disconnect between who you view yourself as perhaps you were right you know 25 years ago 30 years ago but we don't necessarily update these things so the knowledge of the self is a very good continuing skill to have. You come to the very um, critical point is continuous learning because learning is not only you design a course for you to sit in a classroom or like uh, to talk to some. It's also like about your daily, like uh, your daily learning, like through reading or like uh, by, um, by exploring like uh, uh, research, uh, literature, talking to clients, and discussing with colleagues, uh, exploring the data, and building some models, for example. Uh, through this kind of stuff, you're not only like uh, solving a problem, actually you're op optimizing your learning yeah. as well. Well, that's a very wise, uh, very wise approach, uh, but you seem to have had a, a a very full uh, path to uh, where you are now. So it's not surprising that wisdom is something that has accumulated over the years. Uh, I'd like to thank you uh, for sharing your um, your experience with us and having a discussion with us. And um, I wish you happy end of the work year and presumably we can all go back to something a little bit more normal and we can have this meeting face to face in the future. Perhaps you'll come and talk to the students instead of talking to them uh, from from your living room. But at any rate, uh, thank you very much. Yay. Yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity to have a chat. It's very meaningful.